Welcome to the course on computer design of electrical machines. We will have a lecture 32 today on design of Sri Lakanth mode machines part 2. Uh, we will start the outline of the today lecture starting with the introduction, the analytical method for computation of motor flux linkage, the design consideration for Sri Lakanth motors, then determination of design parameter, stator, rotor and winding parameters, performance calculation of design Sri Lakanth motor. Mechanical and thermal consideration of electronic motor followed by exercise and numerical problems and references like. So, coming to the introduction, the requirement of for finding the performance characteristic of electronic motor is, gen, is to generate the relationship between flux linkage versus rotor position as a function of machine phase current and a procedure for analytically derived deriving the machine characteristic given the motor dimension and excitation condition along with the number of turns per phase. In this electronic motor, the aligning position corresponds to the center of stator and rotor pole coinciding and aligning position with the midpoint of interpolar rotor gap facing the stator pole and it is possible to calculate the flux linkages for the aligning position analytically due to the fact that the leakage flux is negligible in the aligning position and it is not possible to calculate the accurate flux linkage for the underlying position because of the leakage path are not known as well as the air gap is large. So, coming to analytical method for motor flux linkage computation, uh, the analytical flux linkage calculation, the relationship of motor output variables to motor dimensions, the number of poles, number of turns per phase, excitation current and current conduction angle is not explained. Hence, a change in one or many of the rotor and control variables require an entire finite element analysis computation which is either in two or three dimensions and each set of finite element computation takes considerable amount of time. To save time and analyze the effect of design parameters on motor performance, an analytical model is required and the final design emerging from this analytical approach can be analyzed with finite element modeling to improve the accuracy of performance prediction and flux maps are usually derived based on experience of the designer and can be fine tuned to the finite element analysis tool to improve the accuracy of the flux path and uh, typically the I mean flow of this analytical flux calculation is typically with the in given in flow chart here I mean from a starting we assume the initial value of the stator pole flux density BAP and then calculate the final uh, find the stator flux per pole by SP, calculate the flux in path 1 for various machine segments and area cross section of the various segment encountered by flux tube 1, then evaluate the flux density in the various segments and from BH curve of laminated material find the H corresponding to B of that particular segment, compute the length of flux path in each segment L and compute MF of each segment by taking the product of its H and L derive the magnetic equivalent circuit and write the ampere circuit equation, uh, circuital equation and compute the error F H delta F, F minus delta H L and the test whether it is within the error excitation and if delta E is I mean less than greater than F C then we can say uh, you, you say no then we of course incre increase or decrease the flux density. I mean from which we started for typically in stator pole or if yes then we go to if it is less then find the final value of VSP, uh, compute reluctances and hence the inductance contributed by flux tube 1. Likewise the compute inductance contributed by various flux tubes because there are number of positions at which the inductance will be varying and some of the inductance contributed by the flux tube to obtain the inductance of the winding. So, typically taking a flux linkage at a line position as you can see in the diagram I mean with the notation of 1 and say 7 edge how the rotor and stator pole are aligned. So, the derivation of the inductance is much simpler for the stator and rotor pole aligning position than the aligning position and the flux lines about 90 to 98 percent pass the air gap between the stator and rotor and there is a small flux due to leakage between adjacent poles. So, coming to typically flux path 1 consists of majority of the flux and is, and is mutual flux connecting the stator and rotor. So, flux path 7 has leakage flux only when connecting the excited poles with the adjacent pole and carries a, only a small flux and this typical example for flux 
path 1 and 7 given here in the diagram with the typically under lang condition to magnetic equivalent circuit for the lang position consists of here the reluctance rs y1 on typically on the from both side and then you have a mff followed by two times rspl then two times rgl1 then two times rpl1 and then of course in the two two parallel yokes mmf so you can just understand it it has a reluctance of different parts of magnetic as well as including the air gap so there are typically five parts i mean you can call it here of magnetic circuit similar to like other machine and when we go finally typically a magnetic flux path aligned for path 7 with the mf f7 uh, and flux considering of for 5 7 which have a reluctance of uh, r s y and uh, s to the pole as well as the yoke and typically the air gap rg7 like so now you can just see how the flux linkage at a line position consists of for the air gap we can call it lg1 is lg and you can calculate what is the area ag1 that is bs dl d by 2 l plus dr in bracket d by 2 minus lg into l divided by 2 and similarly for that is for all these calculation for flux path 1 for line position and then instead of all lsp1 equal to hs that is the height of the uh, virtually the pole so an area is asp equal to bs dl d by 2 l and rotor pole it is L, lrp1 equal to hr that is high equal to height of the rotor pole so, and the area is arp1 equal to br in packet d by 2 minus lg into l and back iron is lry1 that is the yoke of rotor so that is pi by 2 in packet d by 4 minus lg minus hr plus dhs by 2 and AR area corresponding to JR Y1 equal to in bracket D by 2 minus LG minus HR into L and the stake back current we can call it the stator yoke that is LSY1 the length is pi by 2 in bracket D plus HS plus HSY and area HS ASY1 equal to BSY into L. So, these are the calculation for path length I mean path length in the sense length of magnetic circuit in different parts and cross section area corresponding to this flux path line 1 now because here the total air gap is gone changing so now we have a similarly length and area for the section of flux path 7 in the aligned position so for the air gap we can say lg7 equal to 3 hs by 4 into pi by 2 and area is corresponding to ag7 equal to 3 hs by 4 into l similarly for straight pole lsp7 equal to 1 by 2 3 hs by 4 plus bsy by 2 and asp7 equal to half in bracket 3 hs by 4 into l and similar by straight back iron LSY7 equal to approximately LSP7 and the area is ASY7 equal to BSY into L. So, now applying the ampere circuital law, the IMF calculated for flux path 1 are summed as SH, FT equal to 2 in bracket HSP1 plus LS1 plus HG1 into LG1 plus R, 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 HRP1 into LRP1 and plus hry1 plus lrn plus hsy1 into lsy1 so these all five parts are accounted here and from the calculated and applied mf the error in the mf is found delta f equal to f minus fc equal to tph into i minus fc and the flux in the path flux path one is found now phi a equal to tph into i that is the mf divided by 2 in bracket 2 rsp1 plus rg1 plus 2 rp1 in bracket plus r y by r y 1 by 2 plus r y as i s y by 2 so that is give the flux into the uh, magnetic path 1 now coming to typically and the path 1 flux contribute to an inductance equivalent to inductance that is l a 1 equal to t p h into y a 1 i and similarly for flux leakage flux path 7 the length of and area of the cross section of various parts in the flux path r f c equal to in bracket HSP7 plus uh, you can call it LSP7 plus HSG7 plus LG into LG7 plus HSY7 into LSY7 in whole as a bracket and MF error for this calculator is derived delta F equal to 3 by 4 TPH into I in minus FT and then the flux path is derived as phi A phi 7 A equal to 3 by 4 TPH into I divided by RSP7 plus RG7 plus RSO y7 and the inductance due to the flux four flux path in path 7 as l a7 equal to 4 in bracket 3 by 4 tph i divided by i or equal to 3 ph tph phi 
seven a divided by i a and total allowing inductance is calculated l a equal to l a l a one plus l a seven. So now coming to the flux linkage calculation at a line position as you can see here on line position we have here on a line rotor pole corresponding to different parts 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 and 7 as you can see here so 7 path for the analytical calculation of a line position of this 8 by 6 8 pole on straight and 6 pole on rotor switch four phase switch electronic motor so flux linkage as an align position is more completed so starting from flux linkage in subcategorized into seven parts as path one, two, three, one, and up to seven for inductance calculation and uh, unaligned position. And the leakage and funging are more at the unaligned position as compared to the aligned position. And the flux and the path length and the area is used for the reluctance measurement in the each part of the motor in different parts. Now, coming to typically flux path and aligned position for flux path one at a line position, as you can see in the diagram. The position flux passes air gap stator pole, stator back iron, and rotor pole wire back iron. So, actually, passes through four parts. And calculation for <coughs> you can call it flux linkage and length of the flux path in air gap LG1 equal to D by 2 minus LG minus HR, and where LG is the air gap during alignment and HR is the rotor pole height. And area flux path in the air gap is AG1 equal to ASP1 plus AR1 by 2 equal to BS DL upon 16 plus 5. Theta 3 in bracket d by 2 minus lg minus hr into l, where beta s is the stator pole arc and d is the pole diam bore diameter and l is the stack length. Now, flux linkage at a line position path 1. So, length of the flux path in rotor back iron is lry equal to pi in bracket dsh by 4 plus d by 4 plus minus lg by 2 minus hr by 2, where dsh is the rotor full, rotor soft diameter and area flux path of the rotor back iron is ar by 1 equal to, equal to in bracket d by 2 minus lg minus hr minus dsh by 2 in bracket into l where the quantity inside the parenthesis is the thickness of the rotor back iron now the length of the flux path in stator pole lsp 1 equal to hs and hs is the stator pole height and area flux path in the stator pole asp 1 equal to pi d uh, DL BS upon 8 and where D is the inner stator lamination diameter, BS is the stator pole arc and L is the, is the stator iron stack length. Now, length of flux path in stator back iron LSY 1 equal to pi in bracket D plus 2 HS plus BSY by 2 and where BSY is the back iron of iron back iron thickness. Area flux path of the stator back iron ASY 1 equal to BSY into L where the quantity inside the parenthesis is the thickness of the rotor back iron. So now from the final den final flux density in the various segments of flux path 1 and the magnetic in field in density, the reluctances are computed. The reluctance of the stator pole is segment is RSP1 equal to L LSP1 divided by SP1 mu 0 mu R equal to LSP1 divided by SP1 in bracket BSP1 divided by HSP1 equal to HSP1 LSP1 divided by BSP1 and ASP1. Now, similarly, the reluctances of air gap, rotor iron and stator back iron are RG1 equal to LG1 divided by mu0 AG1 and RY1 equal to HR Y1 LRY1 divided by BRY1 ARY1 and RSY1 equal to HSY1 LSY1 divided by BSY1 and ASY1. So now the inductance contribution by flux path 1 at a line and a line inductance is that L, LU1 that we call it an aligned position TPH51 divided by I equal to TPH into F1 div, divided by in bracket 2 as RSP1 2 plus 2 RG1 plus RSY1 plus RY1 by RY1 by 2 divided by total I equal to TPH square divided by in bracket 2 as RSP1 plus 2 RG1 plus RSY1 by 2 plus RY1 by 2. So, now coming to the flux linkage and line position flux path 2 as shown in the diagram. For the flux path 2 at an line position, the flux passes through air gap, stator pole, rotor pole, stator back iron and rotor back iron as shown in the figure. So, flux linkage at an line position in part 2, length of flux path in air gap is LG2 equal to RBC into BC by pi by 3. And area flux path in air gap is AG2 equal to AS P2 plus ARP2 by 2 
and S P two is the area of the your straight pole and A R P two is the area of the rotor pole in part two. Now, length of the flux path in straighter pole is L S P two equal to H S, where H S is the straighter pole height and area of the flux path of straighter pole is equal to S P two equal to half in bracket beta S by four into D by two into L. That is the diameter of straighter laminations. Beta S is the straighter pole arc and L is the straighter iron stack length. Now you can see now the length of the flux path in the rotor core is L P R two equal to H R by four. H R is the rotor pole arc and area of the flux path in the core is A R P two equal to H R by four into L. As you can see, all the reluctance is connected here with the in part two F two. Now length of the flux path in the rotor iron uh, I L R Y two equal to L R Y one. Area of the flux path in rotor back iron A R Y two equal to A R Y one. And length of the flux path in the rotor back iron L S Y two equal to L S Y one. And area of the flux path of straight back iron is A S Y two equal to A S Y one. The ampere circuit equation for flux path two is written from the magnetic circuit. That is F two equal to in bracket two R S P two plus R G two plus R R S P two bracket close plus in bracket R S R Y two plus R S Y two divided by multiplied phi two. So the your R M F is delta F equal to T P H I minus in bracket two R R S P two plus R G two plus R S P two bracket and then typically plus R Y two plus R S Y two into phi two. Where so from the flux tube to the another for we can have a formula of four phi two equal to T P H into I divided by two. In bucket R S P two R Y two R G two plus R S R P two plus R S Y and plus R Y two and the inductance contributed to the flux path two is a line as a line condition is L U two equal to two P H into phi two upon I. Now coming to the flux linkage at a line on a line position three the flux path as you can see in the diagram the flux path three and a line position is flux passes through air gap stator pole rotor pole. Straight back iron and rotor back iron. And now length of the flux path in air gap is L G three equal to R B C. That is B C into pi by three, as you can see in diagram. And area flux path in the air gap is A G three equal to S P three plus A R P three by two. A S P three the area of polar straight pole and A R P three the area of rotor pole in part three. Now length of flux path in the straight pole L S P three equal to H S and H S is the straight pole height and area of the path of straight pole. Flux path of the straight pole A S P three equal to three by thirty two in bracket beta S into D by two into L. That is the inner straight lamination diameter. Beta S is the straight pole arc and L is the uh, straight iron stack length. So length of the flux path in rotor pole L R P three equal to three H R by four H R is the rotor pole height and area of flux path of the rotor pole that is A R P three equal to H R by four into L. So length of flux path in the rotor back iron L R L R Y three equal to L R I one, and area of flux path in rotor back iron is area R Y three equal to R one, and the length of flux path in back iron L I L S Y three equal to L S Y one, and area of flux path of straight back iron A S Y three equal to A I A S Y one. Now the flux tube three at a line condition for inductance that is phi three equal to T P H into I divided by two in bracket R S P three plus R R G three plus R P three. Plus R S Y three plus R Y three and the inductance for two flux path is L U three equal to T P H into two pi three divided by I and that is two T P H phi three upon I. Now the flux linkage at the unlinked position four, as you can see in the diagram. So the four flux path four at unlinked position, the flux passes through air gap, stator pole, rotor pole, stator back iron, rotor back iron, and the length of the flux path in air gap is L G four equal to B C. And area of the flux path in the air gap is A G four equal to A S four plus A R four divided by two. A S four is the area of the stator pole. A R P A four is the area of rotor pole in path four. And now length of flux path in stator pole is L S P four H S H S is the stator pole height. And now area of the flux path in stator pole is S P four equal to one by thirty two beta S D by two into L plus H S by four sixteen into L, where D that in a Later, lamination diameter and beta is the stator pole arc and L is the length of stator iron stack length. Now, length of flux path 
रोटर पोल रोटर पोल इज एल आर पी फोर इक्वल टू सेवन एच आर बाई एट एच आर इज द हाइट ऑफ रोटर पोल एंड एरिया ऑफ द प्लग पाथ इन रोटर पोल इज ए आर पी फोर इक्वल टू एच आर बाई फोर इंटू एल एंड नाउ लेंथ ऑफ द प्लग पाथ इन बैक आर एन आई एल आर फोर इक्वल टू एल आर वन एंड एरिया ऑफ द प्लग पाथ इन रोटर बैक आर एन इज ए आर वाई फोर इक्वल टू ए आर वन एंड लेंथ ऑफ द प्लग पाथ इन स्टेट बैक आर एन इज एल एस वाई फोर इक्वल टू एल एस वाई वन एंड एरिया ऑफ प्लग पाथ इन स्टेट बैक आर एन एस फोर वाई इक्वल टू एस वन नाउ द फ्लक्स और फ्लक्स टू पी एन लाइंग इंडक्टेंस इज फाइव फोर इक्वल टू टी पी एच आई आई डिवाइड बाई टू इंटू ब्रैकेट आर एस फोर प्लस आई जी फोर प्लस आई आर एस पी फोर प्लस एस आई फोर प्लस आर वाई फोर द इंडक्टेंस कंट्रीब्यूटर फ्लक्स पाथ फोर एट अलाइंग कंडीशन इज एल्यू फोर इक्वल टू टू पी एच इंटू फाइव फोर अपन आई एंड नाउ कमिंग टू द फ्लक्स लिंक इज एट ऑन लाइंग पोजिशन फ्लक्स पाथ फाइव एज यू कैन सी इन द डायग्राम तो द फ्लक पासिस द फ्लक पाथ फाइव एट लाइन पोजिशन इज द फ्लक पासिस एयर गैप एयर पोल रोटर पोल स्टेट बैक रन एंड रोटर बैक रन पोर्सन एंड लेंथ ऑफ फ्लक पोथ इन एयर गैप इज एल जी फाइव इक्वल टू हाफ इन बैकेट डी बी प्लस डी सी इंटू फाइव थीटा फोर एंड एरिया ऑफ फ्लक पाथ इन एयर गैप इज ए जी फाइव इक्वल टू एस पी फाइव प्लस एयर पी फाइव डिवाइड बाई टू वेर ए एस पी फाइव इज द एरिया ऑफ द स्टेट पोल एंड आर पी इज द एरिया ऑफ रोटर पोल इन फ्लक इन पाथ फाइव आउ लेंथ ऑफ द फ्लक पाथ इन स्टेट पोल एल एस पी फाइव इक्वल टू एच एस एंड एच एस इज द स्टेट पोल हाइट एंड एरिया ऑफ फ्लक पाथ ऑफ स्टेट पोल इक्वल टू एस पी फाइव थ्री बाई फोर एच एस बाई फोर इन टू एल एंड इज द इनर डायमीटर लेमिनेशन डायमीटर बी टा एस इज द स्टेट पोल आर्क एंड एल इज द लेंथ इज द स्टेट आयरन लाइन स्टेक लेंथ और लेंथ ऑफ फ्लक्स पाथ इन रोटर पोल एल आर पी फाइव इक्वल टू एल आर एच आर एच आर इज द रोटर पोल हाइट एंड एरिया ऑफ फ्लक्स पाथ इन द रोटर पोल ए आर पी फाइव इक्वल टू इन बैकेट डी बाई टू माइनस एल जी इन टू बी आर बाई बीट आर बाई एट इन टू एल एंड नाउ लेंथ ऑफ फ्लक्स पाथ इन द रोटर बैक आर एन एल आर बाई फाइव इक्वल टू एल आर बाई वन एरिया ऑफ फ्लक्स पाथ इन रोटर बैक आर एन ए आर फाइव टू आर वन एंड लेंथ ऑफ फ्लक्स पाथ इन स्टेट बैक आर एन एल एस वाई फाइव इक्वल टू एल एस वाई वन एंड एरिया फ्लक्स पाथ ऑफ स्टेट बैक आर एन एल ए एस वाई फाइव इक्वल टू एस वन वन नाउ द फ्लक्स फोर द फ्लक्स टू फाइव एट द अनलाइंग पोजिशन फाइव 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 इक्वल टू टी पी एच इन टू आई डिवाइड बाई टू इन बैकेट आर एस पी फाइव प्लस आर एस जी वन आर जी फाइव प्लस आर एस आर पी फाइव इन बैकेट आर एस फाइव प्लस आर वाई फाइव इन डक्टेंस पर टू टू लक्स पाथ इज एन लाइन एल यू फाइव इक्वल टू टू टी पी एच एस वाई फाइव डिवाइड बाई आई नाउ द फ्लक्स फ्लक्स लिंकेज एट अ लाइन अनलाइन पोजिशन फॉर पास सिक्स एज यू सी इन द डायग्राम तो फ्लक पास सिक्स एट अनलाइन पोजिशन फ्लक पास एयर गैप स्टेट फोर स्टेट फोर एंड स्टेटर बैक कारन एंड लेंथ ऑफ द फ्लक पाथ इन एयर गैप एल जी सिक्स इक्वल टू ओ सी इन टू थीटा टू एंड एरिया फ्लक पाथ इन एयर गैप ए जी सिक्स इक्वल टू एस पी सिक्स प्लस ए आर पी सिक्स बाई टू एंड ए एस पी सिक्स इज द एरिया ऑफ द स्टेट पोल एंड ए आर पी सिक्स इज द एरिया ऑफ रोटर पोल इन पास सिक्स और लेंथ ऑफ फ्लक पाथ इन स्टेट पोल एल एस पी सिक्स इक्वल टू फाइव बाई एट एट एच एस एल एच एस इज द स्टेटर पोल हाइट एंड एरिया फ्लक पाथ ऑफ स्टेट पोल दैट इज एस पी सिक्स एच एस फोर इन टूल एड इज द इनर स्टेटर लेमिनेशन डायमीटर बी टाइस इज द स्टेट पोल आर्क एंड एल इज द स्टेटर आयरन स्टेक लेंथ नाउ लेंथ ऑफ फ्लक्स पाथ इन द स्टेटर बैक आर एन एस एल एस वाई सिक्स इक्वल टू इन बैकेट डी वाई टू प्लस एस एस प्लस पी एस वाई बाई फोर बैकेट क्लोज इन बैक अनादर बैकेट टू फाइव बाई पी एस माइनस टू टीटा वन बैर पी एस इज द नंबर ऑफ स्टेटर पोल एंड एरिया ऑफ पाथ इन स्टेटर बैक आर एन एस सिक्स इक्वल टू एस वन एस वाई सिक्स इक्वल टू एस आई वन नाउ द फ्लक्स इन फ्लक्स पास सिक्स इक्वल टू फाइव सिक्स इक्वल टू एफ सिक्स डिवाइड टू एस एस सिक्स प्लस आर जी सिक्स प्लस आर वाई सिक्स दैट इज थ्री बाई एट टी पी एच आई पी एच डिवाइड बाई टू आर एस पी सिक्स प्लस आर जी सिक्स प्लस आर एस वाई सिक्स नाउ द इंडक्टेंस कंट्रीब्यूटेड टू फ्लक्स पास सिक्स एट अलाइन पोजिशन एल यू सिक्स इक्वल टू फोर इन बैकेट थ्री बाई एट टी पी एच फाइव सिक्स डिवाइड फाइव सिक्स डिवाइड बाई आई नाउ द फ्लक्स पास फोर पास सेवन एट अलाइन पोजिशन द फ्लक्स पास एस थ्रो एयर गैप स्टेटर पोल एंड स्टेटर बैक आयरन तो फ्लक्स लेंथ लेंथ ऑफ द फ्लक्स पाथ इन एयर गैप इज एल जी सेवन एच एस फाइव फोर इंटू फाइव बाई टू एरिया ऑफ फ्लक्स पाथ इन एयर गैप इज ए जी सेवन इक्वल टू एस पी सेवन एंड एस पी सेवन इज द एरिया ऑफ स्टेटर पोल लेंथ ऑफ द फ्लक्स पाथ इन स्टेटर पोल इक्वल टू एल एस पी सेवन एच एस
where the T is the inner lamination diameter, beta is the stator pole arc and L is the stator iron stack length. Now length of flux path in the stator back iron, LS by 7 equal to HS by 4 and area of flux path in stator back iron, AS by 7 equal to AS by 1. So flux path, for flux path 7, the phi flux in path 7 is equal to phi 7, 1 by 4 TPH into I divided by RSP 7 plus RG7 plus RSY7. And you can see equivalent circuit how it looks like in a magnetic circuit for plug path 7. Now the inductance computed plug path 7 LU7 equal to 4 TPH by 2 into phi 7 by I or 2 P, 2 pH phi 7 by I. Now inductance, underlying inductance is obtained as the sum of all inductance computed by plug path 7 plug path as given here LU equal to J equal to 1 to 7 and LUJ. Now coming to design consideration for reluctance motors. Now preliminary step for design is design of SRM start with the selection of frame size, stator outer diameter D0, stack length L and shaft outside diameter DSH. So from the IEC standard based on the required power and torque rating of the machine, in practice 3 mm of um, frame size is left for mounting purpose and initial stack length can be chosen as distance between the frame mounting hole. Now coming to selection of secondary data. Selection of phase voltage of the winding is chosen based on the power rating. Then air gap length, selection of steel type, pH curve characteristic of the material used in stator and rotor laminations has to be examined. And it is assumed that the stator pole flux density is equal to the knee point of the BS curve while designing the machine. Now coming to the choice of phases, starting capability, single phase machines have a starting problem and require power net intermediate position to serve this purpose. So in direction capability number of phases decide when the machine can run in one or two direction. For example, single phase or two phase machine are designed to run in only one direction. A reliability. This increases with the increase in phase numbers because of failure of one phase kept the machine running with the remaining healthy phases. The reliability is highly relevant in critical applications such as defense mission actuators in nuclear power plant, aircraft generator and icebreaker for research mission. Now coming to the cost as the number of phase increases the corresponding converter phase units and their drive logic power supply and control units increase and this increases the cost and size of the machine. Now coming to power density, power density of the machine increases with the number of with the phase numbers and efficiency, efficient high speed operation. Efficiency is enhanced by reducing the core loss at high speed by decreasing the number of stator phases and lowering the number of phase switching per revolution. So this is the reason why the three phase machines are preferred over the four phase in an aircraft starter, starter generator SRM because of its high speed operation and the need for to keep the size of the size smaller which requires a great reduction in the losses to maintain thermal robustness. These practical issues limit the SRM configuration to 6x4 and 8x6 in most of the applications. Now coming to why higher number of higher phase numbers, the so electric motors should have the more than two phases for successful operation because the value of absolute overlap is required to be at least one to make the motor capable of producing torque at all the rotor position. The absolute overlap ratio is the ratio between the absolute torque zone that is pi upon nr is to the stroke angle 2 pi upon stroke divided by revolution that is 2 pi divided by m into nr where nr is the number of rotor points. So this ratio should be m by 2 where m is the number of phases to make it this as a 1, so m has to be 2. The number of stock can be increased with more phases without increasing the number of poles. So torque dips are removed with the more phases. And typical example is here when you have a 3 phase, you have some torque ripple and then 4 phase you have a less torque ripple and 5 phase you have very small torque ripple because of overlapping concept like. So now coming to choice of stator and rotor pole configuration, combination. So configuration available are 2 by 2, 4 by 2, 3 by 2, 4 by 2. 4 by 4, 6 by 2, 6 by 4, 6 by 6, 8 by 8, 8 by 6, 8, 10 by 8, 12 by 8, and 12 by 10, and many more. So it is preferred to have non integral the value of the stator and rotor pole ratio. The limiting factors in the pole selections are number of converter switches, cost of associated gear drive, logic power supply, and control requirement in terms of rise and fall times of phase current. 
Now state of phase frequency is given F is equal to W R divided by 2 pi into P R hertz. As the rotor pole increases, the state of frequency increases, resulting in a higher coil loss. Increase in switching frequency results in commutation torque ripples, which can be filtered easily and provides quite over operation. The applications such as fans or pumps and vehicle propulsion, higher number of poles may not be necessary as they can withstand higher commutation torque ripple. Based on guidelines, the industrial design include mostly 6 by 8, 8 by 6, 12 by 8, and 12 by 10 combination. Now, why less rotor pole than the stator? SRM may have more rotor pole than the stator, as leads to smaller stroke angle and lower torque level. However, it suffers from the following drawback lower inductance ratio, higher core losses, increased VA rating of the controller, decrease in specific output. So, therefore, SRMs are preferred with large number of stator poles with. Advantage like high inductance ratio, reduced copper loss, shorter frame size, decrease in underlying inductance. So, now coming to choices of pole arc, the stadium pole, pole angle selection form a crucial part of the design process. So, there are many guidelines to follow to be followed during the selection process. The standard design normally has a stator pole arc angle is smaller than the rotor pole arc angle, and the constraints on the value of pole arc angles are briefly. The scab here, the rotor power arc is greater than the stator pole angle, that is beta arc greater than beta s. So, stator pole arc should be greater than the stroke angle for starting the machine. So, beta s should be greater than E, and the angle between the corners of the adjacent pole must be greater than the stator pole arc. So, 2 pi upon r r should be greater than beta plus beta r. Now, selection of pole arc, as you can see in the diagram, here is the only feasible region. I mean, if we really talk about stator pole arc to rotor pole arc, I mean, uh, in this feasible region only we design the typically the your switch reluctance model. Now, coming to dimension of design parameters, so the output equation relates to bore diameter, length, speed, and magnetic and electric loadings to the output of the machine, and the output equation of SRM will significantly different from that of the conventional machine. The flux linkage, flux linkage voltage relationship for of flat topped phase current I is obtained by V equal to D lambda upon DT equal to lambda A minus lambda U divided by lambda U or LA S minus LU into I divided by T, where LU S is the lying inductance, LU is the unlying inductance, V is the applied voltage, T is the time taken for the rotor to move from unlying to aligned position. So, that time can be expressed in terms of stir pole arc and rotary speed. So, torque T equal to beta s upon omega rm. So, beta s is the stator pole arc in radian and omega m is the rotor speed in radian per second. So, defining the sigma s equal to L u L a s divided by L a u and sigma u equal to L a. You can call it u divided by L u. So, well L a u is done aligned and but unsaturated inductance as you can see in the diagrams like how really it can be modeled in different parts of the this typical inductance or flux linkage versus I stator current characteristic. So, now the applied voltage appears V equal to omega m upon beta s into L a s into I in bracket 1 minus 1 upon sigma s sigma u and in terms of flux density and machine dimensions L a s into I equal to phi into T b h equal to B into A s B into T b h or equal to B into D into L into beta s into B h by 2 where phi is the lying inductance and typically your ASP is the area of stator pole, D is the bore diameter, L is the axial length of the stator pole, B is the stator pole, beta is the stator pole, B is the stator flux density aligned position and TP is the number of turns per phase. So, now you can call stator current may be obtained from the specific electrical loading AS 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 equal to 2 pH I m by pi D where m is the number of phases conducting simultaneously. And, and the power develop is Pd equal to Ke into Kd into V into Im. V and I are the uh, peak phase value. Kd is the duty per cycle and Ke is the efficiency. So, Kd equal to theta I into Q into Pr by 360. Using the above definitions, the power developed by the machine is Pd equal to Ke into Kd into pi, up, pi square upon 121 into bracket 1 minus 1 upon sigma sigma d into B into A. As into d square into l into n r. So, conventional output equation of AC machine is given as Pd equal to Ke 
के ई के डी के वन के टू बी एस डी स्क्वायर एल टू एन आर इन वार्ड तो टोटल द टॉर्क एंड पावर आउटपुट आर प्रोपोर्शनल टू द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ स्पेसिफिक इलेक्ट्रिक लोडिंग एंड मैग्नेटिक लोडिंग एंड बोर्ड एमथर एंड के टू इज द वेरेबल डिपेंडेंट ऑन द ऑपरेटिंग पॉइंट ऑफ द मोटर एंड इज रिटर्न बाय द स्टेटर पेज करंट मैग्नेटिक करेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ द कोर मेटेरियल एंड द डायमेंशन ऑफ द मोटर लाइफ तो द डिवलप आउटपुट पावर इज ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम दिस आउटपुट इक्वेशन पी डी के ई के डी के वन के टू बी एस डी स्क्वायर एल एन आर इन वार्ड वेयर के ई द एफिशियंसी फैक्टर के डी इज द ड्यूटी साइकिल ऑफ पेज के वन पाई स्क्वायर वन ट्वेंटी के टू इक्वल टू वन माइनस एल एस बाई एल यू एल एस इज अलाइंग इंडक्टेंस एल यू इज द अनलाइंग इंडक्टेंस बी इज द स्टेटर पोल फ्लग डेंसिटी एस इज द स्पेसिफिक इलेक्ट्रिकल लोडिंग डी इज द स्टेटर डायमीटर इनर डायमीटर एल इज द लेंथ ऑफ द स्टैक एंड आर इज द स्पीड ऑफ द साफ्ट इन आर पी एम नाउ दिस इज कमिंग टू लाइक ए डिजाइन इक्वेशन यू कैन सी ऑल द डायमेंशन शेयर इन टर्म्स ऑफ बीट आई एस बीट आर डी आर एंड डी एंड टो आर वाई आर एच आर जी जी ए टो एस एच एस एंड वाई एस एंड डी एस सो दीज आर द डिफरेंट डायमेंशन यू सी इन दिस मशीन ऑफ सिक्स बाई फोर थ्री फेज मशीन नाउ कमिंग टू सेलेक्शन ऑफ डायमेंशन तो डायमीटर एंड स्टैक लेंथ स्पेसी द लेंथ स्टैक लेंथ एज द मल्टीपल ऑफ सब मल्टीप्लाइड सब बोर्ड डायमीटर एज एल इक्वल टू के इन टू डी आउटपुट पावर इक्वेशन रिजल्ट एज पी डी प्रोफेशनल के टू इन टू डी क्यू द रेसो द रेंज के टू इज गिवन बाई पॉइंट सिक्स फाइव टू पॉइंट सेवन फाइव नाउ कमिंग टू डायमीटर लेंथ तो वैल्यू ऑफ बी इन अलाइन पोजिशन कैन बी टेकन एज द अवेलेबल मैक्सिमम फोर कोर लेंथ द स्पेसिफिक लोडिंग एंड एम्पेयर कंडक्टर पर मीटर इज यूजली इन द रेंज ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड बिट एस इक्वल टू एंड स्मॉल मशीन हैव एयर गैप ऑफ पॉइंट वन फाइव टू पॉइंट टू फाइव मिलीमीटर एंड इंटीग्रल हाउस वार मशीन में हैव एयर गैप फ्रॉम पॉइंट थ्री फाइव टू पॉइंट फाइव मिलीमीटर तो नाउ कमिंग टू द फोर नॉन सर्वो एप्लीकेशन द रेंज ऑफ के कैन बी पॉइंट टू फाइव टू पॉइंट सेवन फोर सर्वो एप्लीकेशन इट इज यूजली बिटवीन वन टू थ्री तो नाउ कमिंग टू नंबर ऑफ टर्न्स द कंडक्टर साइज चूजन साइज दैट द अवेलेबल वाइंडिंग स्पेस इज टू बी फिल्ड फॉर स्पेसिफिक electrical loading and board diameter it can be seen that the product tp h and i are the constant uh, it's constant and the best value for those will certify the following small current implying the large number of turns and small value of resistance and inductance the winding imply the smaller number of turns now coming to stator back calculation of stator back iron thickness so stator back iron thickness uh, it determine on the basis of maximum flux density in it and by the additional factor of vibration minimizes produce the acoustic high the flux density stator back iron is approximately that of stator pole and if ws is the pole width given in terms of pole arc as ws equal to d in sin of beta s by 2 now due to the consideration of mechanical robustness and the minimization of vibration it, is, it could have a value of range of w your bs by equal to from ws p 2.5 ws p and it is recommended to a higher value of bsy then its minimum so now coming to stator coil dimensions the stator coil dimensions give its width wc and length sc merges from the area of cross section of the conductor ac given by current density and the number of turns tps a stator coil area is given in terms of number of turns and area of cross section of conductors by sc wc equal to ac ac tps by 2 and the maximum wc is obtained by taking stator board periphery and subtracting the motor pole arc and gap between the coil and dividing them by 2 ps square sag wc equal to pi d minus ps in bracket beta s into d by 2 plus wcs by 2 ps equal to pi d divided by 2 ps minus half in bracket d by 2 beta s plus wcs and available coil height sc is determined as equal to ac into d ps upon 2 wc Or equal to AC into TPS in bracket PS divided by pi d minus PS in bracket P d by 2 beta s plus WCS. Now coming to calculation of stator pole height, the minimum stator pole height is approximately equal to the coil height, but the coil height to be held in place, and for that a small space is required near the pole face. The coil sitting at the root of the pole is not usually tight fitting. and therefore some additional space is lot which must be 
accounted to calculate the stress of pole height and considering the all the factors and the need of a small length of the pole hs the pole height in terms of the coil height hc is given by hs will be between sc and 1.4 sc now coming to outside dimensions of the stator dimensions the outside diameter of the stator dimensions by adding it to pole height and back iron thickness it is given do equal to d plus 2 bsy plus 2 hs now coming to rotor back iron thickness the rotor back iron thickness bry is based on the structural integrity and operating flux density so to be chosen from head to be account for the larger interpolar area gap to provide the higher ratio between the lying and unlying inductances but at the same time it is desirable to have shorter rotor poles to generate minimum vibration in the rotor so now based on these considerations the rotor back iron thickness in terms of stirrup pole width is normally 0.5 to try varies from 0.5 wsp to 0.75 wsp now coming to rotor pole height given the bore diameter the air gap length rotor back iron thickness and the rotor is shaft diameter the rotor pole height is given as sir equal to in bracket d minus 2lg minus dhs minus 2b by 2 where dhs is the rotor shaft diameter now stator stack length of the motor the stack length of the l of the stator is summation of the length of end turns l and d and ls so l total equal to 2l l and plus hs as you can see here typically in the diagrams like now coming to winding design conventionally in asrm has considering coil wound on around the each stator pole so there are different way in which these coils can be connected together to create the phase winding now each slot your slots and coil the cross section of motor is as shown in the figure and the wires are wound around the each stator pole and thus there are two groups of wire belonging to two different phases in each slot and wire wound around the stator pole make make up a coil and the coil can have a one turn two turn and more turns now typical example here how it is the coil number of station of turns one pole two pole coil and multi turn coil now coming to wires and slot fill factor so magnet wires is widely used in srm winding and has two major component the bear conductor and the insulation material So only certain portion of the slot area can contain the wires called slot fill factor and the, there are two slot fill factors bare copper slot fill factor and wire slot fill factor the bare copper slot fill factor is the ratio of bare copper area over the slot area so ff copper equal to 2n turn nstr into pi dc square by 2 divided by s equal to n turn n nstr pi dc square by 2 s where dc is the diameter of the bare diameter and ff copper of 0.4 means that the 40% of the slot area is occupied by the bare conduct now the wire slot fill factor is the ratio of wire area over the slot area of the one slot so f, f wire equal to 2 and t and turn n s t r pi d w square d by 2 square and divide by s equal to n turn s n s t r into pi d square by 2 s s the d w is the diameter of the wire with the insulation and the dw is always greater than dc before the same wire gauge thus for the same slot with the same number of conductors ff copper is the always smaller than ff wire now a higher slot fill factor means that more wires are to be inserted into slot however it should be noted that the slot uh, should have enough space available and not only the conductor but also the insulation layer round conductor the salt fill factor is selected between 35 to 50% for hand wound while the salt fill factor varies from 35 to 40% the lower fill factor enables the hand wiring winding and higher fill factor might require a special winding tool or an automated winding process so now coil connection each page of srm has multiple coils so for instance 12 by 8 srm has a three phases and each phase has a four stator pole the four coils and you can just see how the stator coil is to electrical uh, schematic equivalents and now you can see three connected four coils for page a four series coils connected and electrical schematic here as in the diagram shown here the, the coils and how they are connected coil 1 2 3 4 coil phase a1 
फाइल ऑफ ए फेज फाइल ए वन ए टू ए थ्री ए फोर एंड सिमिलरली यू कैन से हाउ दे रियली आर हैविंग ए करंट फ्लो इन टू द टू टिपिकली इन द डिफरेंट पैल पाथ द कनेक्शन एच ओन टू क्वाइल इन सीरीज एंड पैल तो दे सीरीज एंड पैल कनेक्शन ऑफ एज ए टू सीरीज टू पैल एंड डिपेंडिंग अपन द वोल्टेज एंड कंट रेटिंग ऑफ द मशीन नाउ कमिंग टू डिजाइन वेरीफिकेशन एंड परफॉर्मेंस कैलकुलेशन ऑफ एस आर एम so now coming to design verification design of an srm using the output equation is to be verified from the flux linkage versus current characteristic for both the lying and unlying position the lying flux linkage can be very accurate the same cannot be said for the unlying values the analytical technique to calculate the unlying inductance may have 50 to 100% error compared to actual value thereby introducing a 10 to 15% correction error in the motor output so the analysis of the other characteristic of srm such as calculation of losses in the copper and in the iron by parasitic current and hysteresis is important for the design verification so enough data are available to estimate the efficiency and other parameter of srm so the control can be designed based on the srm characteristic determined by analytical method or finite element method now typically current and current density so two two current waveform for low speed and high speed are shown in the figure As you can see here, the blue for low speed and green for high speed. So current wave form different than uh, corresponding RMS value of current. So, well, if the current wave form of one phase of SRM or the complete electrical cycle is represented by a function I T over the complete electrical cycle T one to T two, the RMS value of the wave form is calculated as I RMS equal to one upon T two minus T one and varying integration from T one to T two I T square into D T. So if the RMS current of one coil is i rms then the resistance of the coil is i r coil the copper loss for that coil can be estimated is p copper coil equal to i rms square coil into r coil now accurate now copper or winding losses accurate estimation of SR, srm copper losses at all the speed are complicated by the fact that the current waveform in the srm is not sensible so current waveform is dependent on operating condition particularly the excitation current speed and the switching a strategy and the current waveform can be approximated to a rectangular block so with this assumption it has been shown that the rms current per phase is given by i rms equal to ip upon under root q where ip is the peak value of current so then copper losses for q phase conducting at a time are generally given by pcu equal to q i rms per rs and the resistance of a single phase can be computed in terms of the specific resistivity to mean turn length lm and the area of the cross section of conductor ac so rs equal to rho lm upon ac into nt so well mean turn length of the winding turn given by lm equal to 2l plus 4wt plus 2 ti into sin beta s by 2 now co losses the co losses are generally calculated by steemens relation p core equal to ch into b and f into b pm ki power a plus b bm plus c into f square bm square so c ch and c are the coefficient of stress and eddy current losses and ab are the constant the eddy current terms in terms of our equation can be written as p core equal to ch f b bm power 1 plus b bm plus c e1 into tb upon dt square where c e1 equal to c upon 2 pi e square find the coefficient c ch and c and the constant ab from the loss curve using the curve fitting process a flux waveform in different sections of the machine are plotted average value of b db upon dt calculated for each section and the loss per kg of the machine is obtained from the above co loss equation and then divide the obtained losses with the corresponding weight of the each section now coming to first the flux density waveform for stator the flux density of other poles are identical but are phase shifted by theta s that is the delay angle between the phases when the energizing the corresponding phase winding and each phase current is conducting for the theta c conduction angle and falls to theta f fall angle during duration and the flux density in the different parts of stator are shown in the figure you can just see how the typically in a your stator pole body the flux shown as a rectangular waveform and then typically in b7 different parts like when say b7 b8 b9 b One than B two and the B three, as you can see how really the I mean one two three four all are shown in different parts here. So, stator flux density waveform for the six by four 
Srilaknath motor with phase A excited, how the flux density pattern is there. Now, similarly for the rotor, the rotor flux density flux density waveform for the C by 4 SRM and phase A excited in different part again, it is also shown here, the different part 1, 2, 3, 4 with the beta. Now coming to mechanical consideration of the Srilaknath motor. Now the typically for mechanical consideration, first is the material selection. When choosing a material, it is important to identify the critical property that it means its selection. So for instance, most of the property listed could be examined for laminated steel. However, the critical property evaluated first when first selecting a lamination steel are generally gauge, plug density, loss density, and magnetic permeability and the component like soft bearing housing and slot lean liners help hold the motor together under operation while the lamination lamination is key, wire coating and the circulation govern the performance of the machine. Now even though the structure of a SRM is relatively simple, a good design that consider practical manufacturing requires a broad expertise and experience across the various disciplines. So during the design phase of a motor, a large number of parameters must be carefully considered and determined. So two major dimensions of the motor frame are the motor facing diameter and the motor facing axle length, so which basically determine the physical volume of the motor. So there are number of other mounting types, for instance, wall mounted, ceiling mounted, pedestal mounted, face mounted, and flank mounted. The major dimensions of the horizontally foot mounted electric motor frame accounting to National Electrical Manufacturing Association NEMA and the Insulation International Electro Technical Commission IEC. The size of the motor frame depends mainly on the volume of the stator winding, the sub-assembly and the type of enclosure, the method and type of mounting. So now it is a mechanical for concern, typical dimensions for foot mounted electric motor frames. As you can see the different distances of bearing 1 to 6 of different parts of this machine. And then you can see the all the dimensions, the housing of 20 by 6 traction motor and layers of SRM with water jacket for the water cooling. As you can see typically in the photogram. I mean the three phase 20 by 24 by 16 selectness motor is hybrid electric power train design and optimization is a part of so now coming for material selection for stator and rotor so the stator and rotor in SRM in SRM are typically made on non rented soft magnetic electrical steel so the property of the core material are subject to numerous factors including purification of steel controlling of alloy gel elements grain orientation and the grain size. So since the iterator and rotor cores of SRM can be exposed to higher frequency, it is often desirable to use electrical steel and lower losses. Now similar to other type of electrical machines, the iterator and rotor in SRM are typically limited to reduce the eddy current loss. losses. So various thickness are available from lamination manufacture for different applications and type of the machine. So sample core material for silicon motor here it is like carbon steel ATS 1000 series, then silicon steel AK steel M series are, are from, from there, then soft material halogen AB, then high saturation alloy ca carpenter hypno, then amorphous alloy Hitachi metal glass, and then nano crystal alloy like Hitachi metal FC. Now coming to lamination and stacking of SRM. The lamination lamination stacking is the next process for assemble to assemble the stator and rotor core res cores respectively, and laminations are stacked actually on a map material with key to align the salient poles and the salient slots and poles. The riveting and bolting offer reliable and economical solution therefore are most implemented. So, however, the pivotal heads may interfere with the end winding and the whole punches in the lamination may introduce local stress and concentration and flux concentration and welding is the another economical and reliable method. Now, the typically here you can see lamination is taking of fire. SRM. So another stacking method is the lamination interlocking. So interlocking process requires a complex and expensive die. Just as you can see here, how the lamination limited limited stack of stator and exterior rotor. So coming to now winding insulation. The insulation layers are necessary around the copper conductor to enable the conduct contact between the wires and without causing any electrical short circuit. So mechanical strength of the insulation is also much lower than copper or steel. So therefore, electrical insulation around the conductor is generally the limit for the lifetime 
of the stator winding and these insulating insulation material are generally are usually made of armoid or mail layered paper nomex is another is an example of insulation paper supplied by dupont for slot insulation and thickness of the slot insulation material ranges between 0.1 to 0.65 mm and you can see how the winding insulation put on laminated lamination cover of steel lugger machine put dry with the insulation i mean and coils and coil insulation on the prototype 6 by 10 typically from a dick laboratory of high in illness institute of technology chicago now coming to thermal consideration of the srm so typically temperature consideration temperature rise in a steel lugger machine is caused by power losses generated by different physical mechanism and losses in steel lugger machine are typically classified as copper iron typically core mechanical action losses copper loss results from joule heating due to the resistivity of the conductor and losses have two component eddy current and hysteresis losses so now coming to mechanical losses in particular friction and voltage losses also contribute to the major temperature rise so starting from power input we have first for distribution of the losses as a copper loss then core loss then excess loss then mechanical loss and then power output so coming to first as a copper losses copper loss is the major loss component in all electrical machines to so dc component of phase resistance is found through the resistance equation which is a function of conductor geometry the so effect of temperature on the copper loss model is accounted by calculating the resistivity as a function of the temperature rho t equal to rho 0 in bracket l 1 plus alpha in bracket t minus t 0 and where rho is the resistivity of initial temperature t 0 to alpha is the temperature coefficient and t is the final temperature and this is how the typically frequency impact the phase resistance of well the rectangular wires as a for the copper loss so as resistance increases with the frequency for the overhang conductor portion and active portion of conductor now coming to iron loss so iron loss is another major loss component in silicon machine so it is typically dominant when machine operates a higher frequency for instance at a higher speed a simple approach to include the core loss in thermal analysis is to consider two heat sources one is the stator and other is the rotor coming to now mechanical losses mechanical losses in electrical machine consist of friction voltage losses friction losses are mainly caused by the caused by the bearings and the resultant heat and the heat passing to ambient via heat bearing increases the local temperature and this tends to degrade the lubricant and reduce the life of the bearing now a general expression for friction voltage losses for all machines is pfw equal to 2d square l n cube into 10 power minus 3 kf b into g into n 10 power minus 3 so d l n g are the outer diameter of rotor and length and weight of the rotor respectively and n is the rotational speed and rpm and kf v is the friction loss coefficient now excess loss excess losses arise from the complex interaction between the external magnetic field and the atomic scale interaction in the steel the so, core loss equation can be rewritten to include the this anomalous or excess loss so p core equal to p stress plus add the current p excess now coming to cooling techniques the cooling te technology uh, can be classified according to the mode of heat transfer conduction natural convection force convection radiation and evaporation cooling and they can also be classified according to cooling field water air oil and phase change material so selected cooling technology depends on cooling requirement for the machine and on which parts are being targeted for cooling is the core stator winding and, and or end winding now typically coming to cooling technique cooling tech technique depending upon the cooling target here is like a cooling target for stator core stator winding and end winding we start from direct cooling direct with the water inject or air or fan or indirect is water inject or air fan and for stator winding cooling channels cooling mat and heat exchanger and the end winding normally cool liquid jets is spray cooling and potting material now typically you can see cooling how it is a cooling technique how the air typically induced ventilation with internal fan you can just see how the air flows flow i mean from one end to the another end typically in the this machine show air gap and then the induced ventilation with the external fan cooling technique and the cooling technique with the force ventilation internal fan how the cooling i mean air blows then how the force ventilation the external fans and how with the water 
जैक जैकेट कूलिंग देन हाउ स्प्रे एंड वाटर जैकेट कूलिंग सो नाउ कमिंग टू थर्मल मॉडलिंग ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन मोटर द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ टेम्परेचर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इलेक्ट्रिक मोटर यूजिंग थर्मल मॉडलिंग इज द की ऑफ टू डिजाइनिंग द थर्मल मैनेजमेंट स्कीम तो कॉमन मेथड्स फॉर थर्मल एनालिसिस इंक्लूड द लम्प पैरामीटर थर्मल नेटवर्क एल पी टी एन यू एफ फाइनेट एलिमेंट लेच एन कंप्यूटर फ्लोर फील्ड फ्लोर डायमिक्स पी एफ डी तो एल पी टी एन ऑफर से क्विक मैथड फॉर डिटर्मिंग द टेम्परेचर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन विद इन द इलेक्ट्रिकल मशीन एंड अलाउ द यूजर टू रेपली डिटर्मिन द चेंजेस रिजल्टिंग फॉर्म वेरिएशन इन द इनपुट पैरामीटर नाउ यू कैन सी हाउ द थर्मल मॉडलिंग आई मीन मेजर पार्ट्स ऑफ हीट फ्लो इन द मशीन so coming from ambient then go to how typically housing how the losses are there different parts like air through radiation and through conduction and through convection so all three you can call it the different symbols with different colors radiation goes with the red and the conduction goes of course with the gray and your convection flow is with the typically your uh, blue dotted typically and how with the inter heat with internal heat then how the internal heat generation with the red how the with no internal heat generation and other internal ventilation to so different part about the heat generation as well as the conduct different heat dissipation or heat flow is there in the thermal modeling of hsrm is accounted now typically layers of hsrm for thermal modeling radian so you have a different layers starting for different colors it is shown here starting from first layer of thought second layer of रोटर बैक आयरन द थर्ड इज ग्रे विद रोटर टीथ दैन फोर्थ इज एयर गैप फिफ्थ इज द स्टेटरेज टीथ सिक्स फिफ्थ सिक्स लेयर बाइंडिंग सेवेंथ इज स्टेट बैक आयरन एंड सेवेंथ इज फ्रेम एंड एट्थ इज दर एम बी एंड एम बी एंड दिस इज द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ एल पी टी एन फॉर द इलेक्ट्रिक मशीन विद द मोटर गैड आई मीन टिपिकली हाउ द फ्लूड यू कैन से डिफरेंट कलर इट इज ओन हेयर दिस थर्मल कंसल्टेशन और वेरिएशन ऑफ टाइम now coming to temperature consideration i mean with the operating time how do you change with the temperature rise for housing typically hot is for then stator surface rotor surface then winding average winding temperature the cool is for temperature hot is for temperature temperature variation for the motor component of the ceram at 3000 rpm peak torque with coolant inlet temperature set of 65 degrees celsius and the ambient temperature at set at 4 degrees celsius typically so now coming to exercise and numerical problems so coming to first question as exercise the cross section area of a one coil is 0.079 square inch the stack length is 1.89 inch and the current density is 4567 ampere square inch find the temperature rise on one side of stack take a uh, row as a 678 into minus 6 ohm inch and k 9.8 so the rate of heat transfer from the coil is j square rho okay. Putting a value, it comes fourteen point one watt per minute cube, and one side of copper loss is putting a value typically here two point one watt. So temperature gradient along with the coil is given here d t upon d x equal to q upon k. Putting value, it comes two point seven degree per Celsius per inch. So since the heat can flow in both directions, the temperature gradient is only one half. Now this value and the temperature rise between the ends of the stack and center is given as putting the value is one point two degree Celsius. Now coming to question two, design a SRM with the following data: power output 500 watt, speed 750, peak current 7, peak phase current 79 ampere, frame OD 190 millimeter, stack pole plug density 1.3 tesla, five tesla, specific electric load 30,000 ampere conductor per meter, air gap length 0.2 millimeter, stack pole angle, stator pole arc angle 20 degree, rotor pole arc angle 33 degree. Now output equation is P equal to K E K D. K1, K2, B, S, D square, L, N, R, and here considering the value duty of one, K2 equal to 0.7, K equal to 0.655, and K E 0.8, and board diameter is given from this equation. Q under root Q P upon K, K, D, K1, K2, B, A, N, N, S in millimeter, and putting value it comes 81.7 millimeter, and length of stack L equal to K D, so it comes 53.5 millimeter, and stack Stator yog dimension B S Y equal to D by two B A B R S, so it comes forty four point two six millimeter, and the height of the stator pole H S equal to D by two minus B S Y minus D by two, putting value it comes thirty nine point eight nine millimeter, and note total back current thickness B R Y equal to D by two minus L G to B R, putting value it comes sixteen point three two millimeter, total pole height 
एच आर इक्वल टू डी बाई टू माइनस एल जी माइनस डी एस बाई डी एस एच बाई टू माइनस बी आर वाई अकॉर्डिंग वैल्यू इट कम्स टेन पॉइंट थ्री थ्री मिलीमीटर इन एरिया ऑफ हिस्टर पोल एस पी इक्वल टू डी बाई टू बी बीटा एस इंटूल इट कम्स सेवन सिक्स टू पॉइंट नाइन वन मिलीमीटर स्क्वायर एरिया ऑफ द रोटर पोल ए आर पी इक्वल टू डी बाई टू माइनस एल जी एंड बी आर इन टू एल दैट इज एट सेवेंटी थ्री पॉइंट वन टू मिलीमीटर स्क्वायर नाउ एरिया एरिया ऑफ द एयर गैप एज इक्वल टू एस पी प्लस एल बाई टू दैट इज एट हंड्रेड एटीन पॉइंट जीरो वन फाइव मिलीमीटर स्क्वायर एयर गैप फ्रेगनेस बी जी इक्वल टू बी एस पी एस पी बाई ए जी दैट इज पुलिंग वैल्यू वन पॉइंट टू सिक्स टेस्ला मैग्नेटिक फील्ड इंटेंसिटी इन एयर गैप एच जी इक्वल टू बी जी अपन मी जीरो वैल्यू इस कम से और वन पॉइंट टेन टू पावर सिक्स इंटू एम्पेयर पर मीटर फोर पी करंट टी पी एच इक्वल टू एच जी इंटू टू एल जी अपन आई पी पुटिंग वैल्यू इट कम फोर्टी फाइव टन पर पेज एंड एजमिंग की करंट डेंसिटी ऑफ फोर एम्पेयर पर मीटर है तो एरिया ऑफ द कंट्री इज कैलकुलेट इज इक्वल टू आई पी डिवाइड बाई जूट जे रूट क्यू तो इट कम्स वन पॉइंट वन टू फाइव मिलीमीटर स्क्वायर तो स्टैंड वाई जे एटीन कैन बी यूज एट हैज एरिया कंट्रेक्ट ऑफ वन पॉइंट वन सेवन मिलीमीटर स्क्वायर ना क्वेश्चन थ्री डिजाइन एस आर एम विद फॉलोइंग डाटा पावर फाइव हंड्रेड वाट स्पीड थ्री थाउजेंड आर पी एम पी करंट सिक्स एम्पियर फ्रेम ओडी टू हंड्रेड मिलीमीटर स्टेक स्टेर पोल फ्लगेंसी पॉइंट फाइव वन टेस्ला स्पेसिफिक इलेक्ट्रिक वोटिंग फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड पर फेयर मिलता है एयर गैप लेंथ पॉइंट टू फाइव मीटर स्टेट पोल आर्क एंगल ट्वेंटी डिग्री रोटर पोल आर्क एंगल ट्वेंटी टू पॉइंट फाइव डिग्री एंड कंसिडरिंग द ड्यूटी रन के वन इक्वल टू वन के टू इक्वल टू पॉइंट सिक्स सिक्स सेवन के इक्वल टू वन पॉइंट फाइव के इक्वल टू पॉइंट फाइव तो फॉर्म टर्म्स पर फेज एंड फेज लाइन इंडक्टेंस तो डी फॉर्म द फार्मूला क्यूब रूट ऑफ दिज ऑल डायमेंशन पावर दैट कम सेवेंटी सेवन पॉइंट एट फाइव मिलीमीटर लेंथ ऑफ स्टेक एल इक्वल टू के डी पुटिंग वैल्यू हंड्रेड सिक्सटीन पॉइंट एट मिलीमीटर स्टेक एरिया तो बोर्ड डायमीटर इज कैलकुलेट डी क्यूब रूट ऑफ दिस कम सेवेंटी सेवन पॉइंट एट फाइव मिलीमीटर लेंथ ऑफ स्टेक एल इक्वल टू के डी दैट हंड्रेड सिक्सटीन पॉइंट एट मिलीमीटर स्टेक पोल एरिया एस पी कैन बी रिटर्न एज ए एस पी इक्वल टू डी बाई टू बी टाइस इन टूल पुटिंग वैल्यू इट कम्स वन पॉइंट फाइव एट सेवन टेन टू पावर माइनस थ्री मीटर स्क्वायर एंड द फ्लक्स इन स्टेट पोल फाइव एस पी फाइव एस पी इक्वल टू बी एस पी इन टू एस पी इज टू पॉइंट थ्री एट मिले पेपर एरिया ऑफ द रोटर पोल ए आर पी इक्वल टू डी बाई टू माइनस एल जी इंटू बी आर इंटू एल वन पॉइंट सेवन सेवन थ्री इंटू टेन पावर माइनस थ्री मीटर स्क्वायर एरिया ऑफ द एयर गैप एज इक्वल टू एस पी प्लस ए आर पी बाई टू वन पॉइंट सिक्स एट इंटू वन पावर माइनस थ्री मीटर स्क्वायर द एयर गैप फ्रेगनेंसी बी जी बी एस पी एस पी बाई ए जी तो पोटिंग वैल्यू वन पॉइंट फोर वन सिक्स दैसला मैग्नेटिक फील्ड एंड एज जी इक्वल टू बी जी अपन मे जीरो इट कम्स योर टिपिकली वन वन टू सिक्स एट वन सेवन एम पी पर मीटर ए मैग्नेटिक सर्किट इक्वेशन रिटर्न एज एफ इक्वल टू टी पी एच आई पी एच दैट इज टू एच जी एल जी इक्वल टू फाइव सिक्सटी थ्री पॉइंट जीरो सेवन थ्री एटी एंड सिंस द इनिशियल द पी करंट वॉज एजूम टू आई पी इक्वल टू ट्वेल्व द टर्म पर फेज कैलकुलेट टी पी एच एफ अपॉन आई पी एच दैट कम नाइन्टी फोर टर्म्स अलाइंग इन सीजन इंडक्टेंस एंड मैक्सिमम करंट करंट नेगलेक्टिंग लीकेज इज कैलकुलेट एंड अलाइंग इक्वल टू पी एच फाइव अपॉन आई पी एच दैट थर्टी सेवन पॉइंट सेवन मिली हेनरी नाउ कमिंग टू क्वेश्चन फोर Find the phase allowing inductance salency ratio if the motor is operating at rated operation. So S R M with the following data: power 500 watt, speed 3000 rpm, peak current 6 ampere, frame O D 200, stator bore plug density 0.51 tesla, specific electric loading by 15000 ampere conductor per meter, air gap length 0.25 millimeter, stator pole arc 20 degree, rotor pole arc 22.5 degree. Considering here the duty ratio one, K two. पॉइंट सिक्स सिक्स सेवन के वन वन पॉइंट फाइव के इक्वल टू पॉइंट एट तो रेटेड टॉर्क टी इक्वल टू फॉर्म पावर इन टू सिक्सटी टू टू फाइव एन दैट इज वन पॉइंट फाइव नाइन न्यूटन मीटर टॉर्क फॉर बी करंट आई इज गिवन टी इक्वल टू हाफ आई स्क्वायर डी एल अपॉन डी टीटा फोटिंग वैल्यू हेयर डी एल कम्स थर्टी पॉइंट एट सिक्स मिलीमीटर एनलाइंग इंडक्टेंस एल इक्वल टू एल ए माइनस डी एल दैट कम्स सिक्स पॉइंट फोर फोर मिलीमीटर इन सेलेंसी रेस ऑफ द मशीन एल एन एल इक्वल टू फाइव पॉइंट एट नाउ कमिंग टू क्वेश्चन फाइव Determine the diameter and length of six by four inner stator, 10 kilowatt SRM. Rated speed of the motor is 1500. Length of the diameter is 1.8. Magnetic loading and electrical loading is 1.6 and 30,000 ampere per meter square. Assume the unity uh, duty cycle and 90 percent efficiency of the motor. The output power is from this equation. P equal to K K D K one K two B S D square L N. And considering the parameters like K equal to 0.9, K D equal to one, K one 0.0 
ए टू थ्री ए टू पॉइंट सिक्स एट बी वन पॉइंट सिक्स टेस्ला एस ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड एंड एन आर पी एम फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड सो नाउ कमिंग क्यूब फ्रॉम द आउटिकेशन कम्स इक्वल टू अल हंड्रेड एलेवन मिलीमीटर एंड एल कम्स टिपिकली एटी नाइन मिलीमीटर नाउ क्वेश्चन सिक्स ए थ्री फेज एस आर एम एज ए सिक्स स्टेट पोल फोर वोटर पोल एंड टू कॉल्स फॉर फेज ऑन द अपोजिट स्टेट पोल विद फिफ्टी टॉन्स ईच द ओल एप एंगल बिटवीन स्टेट एंड रोटर पोल इज ट्वेल्व एंड एयर गैप इज पॉइंट फोर मिलीमीटर स्टेट पोल डायमीटर इज सिक्सटी मिलीमीटर एक्सेल लेंथ ऑफ स्टेटर स्टैक इज फिफ्टी फाइव मिलीमीटर स्टेटर एंड रोटर पोल आर आर थर्टी डिग्री बोथ एंड द करंट द करंट ऑफ टेन एम पी फ्लो थ्रू द टू कॉल सेंसिज नेगलेक्ट द फ्रिंग एंड लिकेज एंड सेचुर इंडक्शन जीरो कैलकुलेट द मैग्नेटिक प्लग डेंसिटी इन द एयर गैप बिटवीन द एक्टिव पोल्स एलेक्ट्रो मैग्नेट टॉर्क एंड एंगल ऑफ द रोटेशन एट विच द टॉर्क इज एसेंशियली कॉन्स्टेंट इफ द करंट इज कॉन्स्टेंट तो सोल्यूशन इज गिवन ऑल डाटा गिवन थ्री फेज एन एस इक्वल टू सिक्स एन आर इक्वल फोर डी पी एस टू इंटू फिफ्टी हंड्रेड डी इक्वल टू सिक्सटी एम एम एल फिफ्टी फाइव एम एम एल जी पॉइंट फाइव बी एस इक्वल टू बी आर पॉइंट बीटा एस इक्वल टू बीटा आर थर्टी डिग्री सेल डिग्री एल आई इक्वल टू टेन एम पी एन पी इक्वल टू फिफ्टी तो कैलकुलेटिंग मैग्नेटिक फील्ड इंटेंसिटी एच जी इक्वल टू टू एन पी आई अपॉन एल जी तो इट कम हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड एम पी एस एल गैप फ्लग डेंसिटी बी जी इक्वल टू मी जीरो एल जी इट कम्स वन वन पॉइंट फाइव सेवन वन टेस्ला एरिया ऑफ पोल आर्क एस पी इक्वल टू बीटा डी एफ बाई टू एल तो पुटिंग वैल्यू इट कम्स जीरो पॉइंट जीरो 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 सिक्स नाइन मीटर क्यूब एरिया गैप परिमेन ईटा इक्वल टू मी जीरो एस पी अपॉन टू एल जी तो इट कम्स पुटिंग वैल्यू वन पॉइंट जीरो एट सिक्स इंटू टेन पावर माइनस सिक्स एंड मैक्सिमम इंडक्टेंस अलाइन एल इक्वल टू एन पी स्क्वायर ईटा तो इट कम्स जीरो पॉइंट वन वन और अलेवन मिली हेनरी एंड अलाइंग अन अलाइंग इंडक्टेंस जीरो देर था टॉट जीरो तो टॉट प्रोड्यूस इज टी हाफ स्क्वायर एल एम आई एल एम एंड पुटिंग वैल्यू वन पॉइंट टू नाइन सिक्स न्यूटन मीटर एंड दीज आर द रेफरेंसेज फ्रॉम बिच दिस थैंक यू थैंक यू